Hi everyone, so this video is a guide to debating tournaments. This is more on the logistical side of debating. And so if you're here for the conceptual stuff, maybe skip this one. But there are a couple of reasons I'm making this. The first is when I was starting out debating, I was very confused and didn't really understand what was going on. And I think especially for people who are quite nervous for the very first debating tournament, it helps to have a good idea of what to expect and how everything works. The second is um, and while I sympathize for everyone who is going through their first debating tournament, it's sometimes organizationally difficult to manage a tournament when people are asking questions in the wrong places, are looking for the wrong people at the wrong time, and therefore it helps as well organizers when people have a good idea of what exactly they should be doing at a certain time. So here's the overall flow of a tournament. You'll have firstly some pre-tournament stuff and briefings. The second is you'll have your preliminary rounds, otherwise known as in rounds. You have your break rounds, also known as out rounds, and the closing ceremony. So just a brief overview of important people in a tournament. The first is the adjudication core, the adj core, or the chief of adjudication panel, or the CAP. They are the people who make debate motions and allocate judges. And so if you have any concern with either of these two things, you should probably ask them. Most particularly, you will maybe have some clarifications on the motion. You'd want to approach the adjudication core about such clarifications. And note that they aren't obliged to answer all of your questions, especially if they think that these clarifications could be advantageous to one side, or if you should just know these things but it might help in the instance that you have some questions and they can clarify some things for you. The second group is the tab team, and they handle all matters relating to the tabulation of scores, matchups, and breaks. So there's a debate platform uh, known as TabbyCat, which is almost what everyone uses, or rather, what almost everyone uses, and it is where you have all the scores and results for each round, um, who you're going to go against, etc. It's a platform that needs to be managed by the tab team during the course of the tournament. And so if you check this platform and you see that there's a discrepancy between your score and what the judge had told you, for example, maybe you were told that you won a debate, but then in the tab platform it says that you had lost a debate, you'd want to approach the tab team. Third is the equity team, and they ensure a safe tournament experience for everyone and they manage conflicts. And what I mean by a safe tournament experience for everyone is that you would want to ensure that people don't have experiences relating to discrimination, whether on the basis of gender status, minority status, language status, etc. It is the equity team that you will often have to approach in the instance you want some resolution of maybe conflict or resolution of an issue that you have encountered over the course of the tournament. They ensure that it's a safe space, and if you have any particular questions, you should approach them. They also manage conflicts, meaning you cannot be judged by people who have a clear conflict of interest in maybe making you win slash lose a debate, or could simply maybe make your relationship weird. So for example, if, if your coach is judging a tournament, you probably should not be judged by your coach, or people from the same team or institution that you are from, or if you are in a a romantic relationship with someone, if you were in a financial relationship with someone, maybe someone is your superior in a company, you also would not want to be judged by them because, again, of the trouble with power in that scenario. So you'd want to submit these conflicts prior to the tournament so that the equity team can collect them and then provide them to the adjudication panel who will be allocating the judges. Last is the organizing committee, the ORCOM or the OC, otherwise known. Uh, they handle the logistics of the event, and I want to make clear that I see the most confusion being that questions for the OC are directed to other teams which might not really know about this kind of stuff. And so if you have questions about the logistics of the event, such as things like payment, um, if you need help with visas, if you need help with securing a hotel room, etc., you'd want to talk to the organizing committee, not, say, the chief adjudication panel. And so since they will be handling the logistics, they will probably be the ones that are best able to help you with those kinds of concerns as well. Pre-tournament preparation. So first is logistics. You'd first want the, in most tournaments, pay for the tournament. 
um, otherwise they might not let you break and obviously it's just a good thing to pay people on time but i think secondly is you'd also want to double check on what to expect from a tournament because tournaments have very different inclusions with the registration fee depending on the type of tournament so for example a lot of major tournaments will have a pretty steep registration fee but the reason for that is they'll include say hotel rooms for your registration but um, a lot of smaller tournaments might just give you the tournament experience and nothing else so you'd want to double check what's included so you can prepare yourself financially whether transportation food hotel rooms and accommodations etc next is you will have a tab link Nowadays, it's TabbyCat. It's quite a good platform, so I don't expect it to go away anytime soon. But it's where a lot of important tournament information can be seen, and you should check this regularly because it's updated live. So you, this is where you will see, for example, how many points you're on, um, or it's where you will see who your opponent is for the next round. It is important to be able to check this regularly just to make sure you're not missing out um, on anything and you will be given your own access to this platform which is quite good because in the olden days you'd normally just have to sit in the same room and watch the projector screen nowadays you could check your phone and it's much more easily accessible this is also where you'll be submitting anything you have to submit so if you're a speaker this is where you will be submitting your assessment of the judge of your round and vice versa if you're a judge this is where you will be submitting the results of your round Lastly is briefings, and this is where information about the norms of the tournament can be found. So for example, if the adjudication core wants to clarify certain rules about the tournament, they will probably say this in the briefing. If the tab team wants a specific process of how you should submit things, they will guide you as to how to do that. Um, the equity team will often provide ways in which uh, you can raise concerns or the different powers that they have um, within the tournament. So tournaments uh, start with preliminary rounds and note that these preliminary rounds are won and lost and given a corresponding score. So you have team points from 0, 1, 2, or 3, depending if you are 4th, 3rd, 2nd, or 1st. And in 3v3, you have 0 or 1, just if you lost or you won. You also have speaker points, which are now individual. So these individual speaker points can have many different ranges. In BP, most commonly, they're just 50 to 100. But in 3v3, there are many differences. You can have 67 to 83, like in Asians. You can have 70 to 80, like in Australs. Or 65 to 85 in some Asian tournaments I've been to, as well as in world schools, if I'm not mistaken. Note that for most things, team points take precedence over speaker points. Meaning, in a ranking, you are ranked by team points first. And then to break ties between team points, speaker points come next. So. In preliminary rounds, you will do a set number of rounds where number one, you will likely go against people who have the same number of team points. Round one is normally randomized because there are no points yet. And so if you are at seven points, your opponent more often than not will be at seven points, sometimes at six, sometimes at eight, but usually it's at most plus or minus one, unless you're at the very top or the bottom of the tournament where there might not be people at plus or minus one. Next is that positions are balanced as much as possible. So in BP, you have four teams, opening government, opening opposition, closing government, and closing opposition, OG, OO, CG, CO. You will ideally do all of those teams in four rounds, but sometimes you will have a difficulty where for the last round, you have two teams that need to do CO, but only one of them can do CO, obviously. And so the tab algorithm will just maximize this as much as possible, but it won't assure that you do all positions. Second, um, the preliminary rounds determine your qualification into the break. So note that if there are five preliminary rounds in a tournament, you will do all five preliminary rounds. And at the end of those five preliminary rounds, you will then see how many points you were able to garner in those preliminary rounds. And then if you make it to a certain uh, number of teams, certain top number of teams, you will be qualified for the break or the elimination stage of the tournament. Something uh, important to clarify and realize is that you will know your team points throughout the tournament, so you'll know whether you won or you lost, but you will not know your speaker points. Speaker points are revealed at the very end of the tournament when they release the tab. Um, they can also be revealed as a team um, or the total speaker points of your team when they announce the break. 
but not the individual speaker points. So if you're a judge going into your first tournament, your scores will be based on two things. One is from the teams who have listened to your reasoning. Or if you are a panelist and you are not the person giving the reasoning for the decision, your scores can also be determined by the chair judge who will assess how well you participated in the deliberation of the decision. For breaks and out rounds, this is where teams are no longer assured they will do this part of the tournament. And the breaks are the elimination stage of a tournament where teams are progressively eliminated until a final winner is determined. So if you lose, you are out. If you win, you proceed. The size of the break often depends on the number of participants, but the common benchmarks are at a fourth to a third of the tournament. So breaks are almost always less than half of the tournament. Half is pushing it quite a bit. Um, but there will be quite a few times, especially when there's a large number of participants, where breaks will go lower than a fourth. And so, for example, if you have the World Universities Debating Championship, which has hundreds of teams, uh, maybe say 400, having 100 teams in the elimination stage just logistically would be a bit difficult. And so they cap it at around 48 teams. There are also various break categories. So maybe you'll get the top 32 teams, the top 48 teams, um, but you can also get them from specific categories. So you can have an open break, which is just everybody in the tournament, or you can have specific language status category breaks, or the top, say, 16 teams that have English as a second language or English as a foreign language. You have novice and pro-am status breaks, so you can have a break only for teams that have never broken in a major tournament or are doing their first tournament. Other categories as well. For judges, the break benchmark is often the number of break rounds times three and then some reserve judges, just to ensure that the earliest break round will have at least three judges. Now, this is not a very good benchmark. I think a fourth to a third is probably a much better benchmark for breaking teams. And that's just because the judge pool can vary, the number of teams can vary, and obviously you need a judge for the number of teams, and therefore it depends on so many different things. But usually uh, an edge core who will determine this would want at least three judges that are going to judge the first break round. So if, for example, it's a quarterfinal and there are four rounds in a quarterfinal, right? You would need at least 12 judges, so you have three in each round. Um, you maybe want to increase that in case some judges can't make it. You could also not include the adjudication core in that break, uh, in, that, in, that fourth, in that 12 number uh, of people breaking, just to ensure that more people are breaking. But maybe there's also just not a lot of judges. Maybe there's a lot of judges, so you'll expand the break. Many different considerations here. How are breaks determined? So you get the team points from the preliminary rounds, and you rank teams based on those team points. So if you have five rounds, the most number of team points you can have is 15 if you win every single round. So maybe a team on 15 points will break first. Now, you'll notice in a debate tournament, there are many teams that will share the num same number of points. So after that, you break ties by speaker points. If they're still tied on speaker points, there is no consensus as to how to break this tie some tournaments do standard deviation, some will do the average win margin, some will look at the strength of opponent. It depends on the tournament and its rules. Next, the top teams from the preliminary rounds will then proceed to the break rounds. So again, if, there are, uh, if there's a quarterfinal, which would mean that you need four teams for the four quarterfinals, you'll have the top 16 teams proceed to the break rounds. Now, as a judge, uh, there's different conventions as to how to determine the judge break. You can have your break be determined either purely by your score or your score with some discretion from the adjudication core. So edge cores should make considerations for diversity in many different categories. Gender, re uh, region, language status, person of color status, many different things. You'd want a diverse judge break to ensure you have a representative panel for every round. How are the break rounds conducted? So progressing through the break, in a format with two teams, you just have to win. So if it's 3v3, if you win, you're through. If you lose, you're out. In BP, which has four teams, the top two teams from each room will advance to the next uh, room. 
So if it's a quarterfinal, to make it to the semifinal, you just have to be in the top two of the four teams. For judging, uh, judges in BP no longer have to determine first, second, third, fourth, or even speaker points. You just need to determine the top two. So you don't need to consider who's going to come third, who's going to come fourth. Some tournaments might still do this. Um, my circuit used to do this, but now I think it's not as common practice. In 3v3, however, judges in most formats still have to submit ballots with speaker points. So it really depends on the format that you're doing. Some will just say who wins. Some will have to be very specific with how to do it. Uh, if you're judging, uh, if you perform better in the preliminary rounds, you will also judge later into the tournament. So you can judge the finals if you perform very well in the preliminary rounds. But if you don't perform as well, but you made the break, maybe you'll only judge the first break round. Uh, note that this is not as clear as uh, when you're speaking though. Because when you're speaking, if you win, then obviously you're performing well and you'll progress further into the tournament. But even if you're the best judge of a tournament, if you're conflicted from other teams or there are just reasons you're unable to judge future rounds, you might not necessarily be allocated to say the finals. Closing ceremony. Um, at this point, the top, uh, rather the following are announced at the closing ceremony, the top speakers in different categories and potentially the top judges and the winners of various finals. So various finals, because again, you can have the open final, a language category final, or a novice final, and potentially finals best speakers, depending on the tournament. So at this point, you'll find out all the results, you'll find out who are the best speakers, um, and also the tab will be released. So that's all. I hope this makes tournaments much easier to approach if you're starting out.